Well, we're into week three of the college football season, and if we had to pick a top quarterback so far, Carson Strong is a pretty good choice. The Nevada pivot has his team off to a 2-0 start. He's already thrown for 693 yards and six touchdowns. This week, he faces Kansas State, and the Wildcats will try to do something very few teams have been able to do, stop him from throwing all over the yard. In two seasons with the Wolfpack, the junior is thrown for over 5,000 yards and 38 touchdowns. He's already being projected as the number one overall pick in next spring's NFL draft. That projection coming from our very own Ryan Wilson, who released his second mock draft of the season this past week. Strong off the board first to the Houston Texans. Five picks later, Heisman hopeful Spencer Rattler comes off the board to the Eagles, since we're talking quarterbacks with North Carolina Sam Howell staying in the state and taken by the Panthers at number nine. And let's bring in the man who authored said mock draft, our Ryan Wilson. Ryan, Carson Strong, number nine in Mach 1. You had him going to the Panthers. Now he moves to number one. That's a big jump in one week. So what did you see that warrants the huge bump? Uh, first things first, Jeremy, we need you to pass along a note to producer Noah. Can I please not follow Tim Doyle? I'm dressed up like I'm looking about to sell some steak knives door to door. He looks like he's in residency in Las Vegas as a big time lounge act. And here I, here I am. I'm going to try to power through it. Here we go. Just a note for Noah. Keep that in mind. Carson Strong went from number nine last week to number one overall this week. Jeremy, it comes down to one thing. His knee. That is the biggest concern with NFL teams and Carson Strong. Everything else, there is not very much to be disappointed about. He played in a huge game in week one against Cal. They beat Cal on the road. They beat... Uh, uh, an undermanned Idaho State team last week, but he absolutely balled out in that game. Carson Strong did. He makes very few mistakes. He knows where to go with the ball before the snap. He doesn't get rattled in the pocket. He actually moves pretty well for having that banged up knee. One that goes back, that injury goes back to high school, and I've talked to teams that will say that will tell you it's going to come down to the medicals with Carson Strong. That's what that's what the deal is there. So everything other than that, and this isn't a Justin Herbert draft. This isn't a uh, Trevor Lawrence draft. There is no clear-cut number one guy, but right now, a few weeks into the season, based on the way he's played, based on the way the other guys have played that he's competing against a quarterback, Carson Strong is my QB1. Yeah, and we'll see what he does with K-State this weekend. Uh, they're slim two-point favorites. That game coming up on Saturday. Okay, so the knee, a little bit banged up, but Strong is still at number one. But then we look at Oregon defensive end Kayvon Thibodeau. He falls to number two to the Lions. He was your number one last week, but he's currently dealing with ankle issues. His coach, Mario Cristobal, says his return date remains unknown. I mean, the Ducks not struggling. They go beat Ohio State last week. But at what point, Ryan, will this start to affect his draft stock? Probably in March or April. Uh, right now, no one is concerned about Kayvon Thibodeau's uh, injury uh, history. He'll be out there. He'll be good to go once he's 100% healthy. And look, you know what's funny, Jeremy? Last year, what you heard a lot of times was uh, from teams, oh, I'm glad that player opted out because that means he doesn't have the opportunity to get injured uh, during the college football season. So in some sense, this is just Thibodeau resting up for NFL teams. And when he's ready, he'll be out there. But remember, a few years ago, Nick Bosa uh, had that, uh, that core muscle injury. He only played a few few games, uh, took the rest of the season off. There wasn't really opting out back then to, to get surgery and to get healed up. No NFL team cared. He still was a top three pick, and he has proven that uh, early on in his NFL career. So Thibodeau will be fine. It's just a matter of getting him healthy in 100%, whether that happens two, three, four weeks from now, tomorrow, five or six months. NFL teams will not be concerned about it until the very last moment. All right. The week one consensus from the NFL was that the Jacksonville Jaguars are a bad football team, maybe even the worst <laughs> football team. But Ryan... They're number four in your mock draft, which means that you have them pegged to win anywhere from two to three games this season. So, I mean, how close is it for you? Can you see Jacksonville once again getting the number one overall pick, or are you fairly confident that Trevor Lawrence is going to be able to lead them to two to three wins this season? I have very little confidence that this team is going to win one or two or three football games. And the only reason, Jeremy, they're fourth is because those are the reverse Super Bowl odds as we sit here uh, by our CBS Sports Line guys. I think that'll change as we get through this thing and watch this Jaguars team uh, play some pretty bad football. I think it starts at the top with Urban Meyer, but there's a very real chance this team ends up once again with the number one overall pick. Yes, they beat, they lost to Houston last week, uh, and Houston currently is considered, according to the odds, the worst team, but Houston thoroughly outplayed them. You could say the same 
things about the Lions, who's currently number two in those reverse Super Bowl odds, expected to be the second worst team after Houston. But they played really hard against that 49ers team, came back, and had an opportunity to get that game close late. It didn't work out for them. We saw no such thing from the Jaguars, not only last week, but not in the preseason either. They didn't battle. Detroit and Houston did. So, again, you could be sitting there with number one overall pick as the Jaguars, and then the, the good news is you can stockpile those picks, trade down, and, and make your team better. But I don't know what's going to happen uh, when we get to the coaching situation, no matter who, uh, how many draft picks they end up having. Yeah, and if they do have the number one overall pick, then obviously it's going to change in terms of mocks because obviously Carson Strong is not a guy that they're going to be looking at, perhaps a Kayvon Thibodeau at that point, if they do go to number one. Okay, you mentioned the Jaguars head coaching situation. I mean, Urban Meyer's name has been mentioned for that opening at USC, but Wednesday unequivocal. No chance, he said, that he's going to bolt for USC. Uh, things are not great under Meyer if what we're hearing from the Jaguars is true. Uh, I, I mean, players are not happy with kind of the way that he's kind of laying things out, a very college-style mentality. Ashad Khan, the owner, I mean, he's not patient if he isn't seeing results, Ryan. So when could the USC job become a possibility for Meyer? <laughs> So, Jeremy, have you ever had a job where literally one weekend people were wondering if you were going to leave? That's where we are for that Meyer. He's played one game. It's not even been a week. It was last Sunday. So here we are. And when he made those comments in our Pick 6 podcast host, Will Brinson, pointed this out on Twitter, uh, Urban Meyer had his head down, wasn't really paying attention, seemed to be mumbling when he said, uh, there's a 100% chance I'm staying. So it doesn't feel like he's really committed, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, as we sit here, Vegas has James Franklin uh, at Penn State and Luke Fickle at Cincinnati as the only only two coaches with better odds of not getting that USC job. Number third is Urban Meyer. But look, I'll take the man at his word for now. We'll see what happens. But I've said this from, from Jump Street. It's a huge difference when you are able to recruit the players you want and are accustomed to winning week in and week out at the college level. And then you go to the NFL where the playing field is much more balanced and you don't have a say in the players that you that are on your roster. And then the things start to unfold like we, we see with the reports from Jason Lockham 4 and how they uh, the lack of effort uh, they seem to have in the preseason in week one. So it's a huge concern, but again, uh, the team won one football game last year. There's not too much further down to go. They just need to figure out the coaching situation if it, in fact, is not going to be Urban Meyer. Well, here's the good news. I mean, in week one, the Jaguars put up 21 points, which is 18 points more than the reigning league MVP Aaron Rodgers and the Packers did in week one. Some even saying on FFT, I'm not sure if they said it on the pick six, but Rodgers is washed. Now, this week they get the Lions. The Lions come for a visit on Monday Night Football. If the offense sputters in that one, are you hitting the panic button when it comes to the Packers? No, and I think what happens, and you know, I was turning in my weekly picks for, for the CBSSports.com experts page. I'm not sure whether I'm considered an expert. I think they ran out of guys to talk to. But I was thinking, okay, are the Lions going to cover this football game? And then I was thinking, take a step back. Every week one, every season, we overreact to some team losing. That sort of surprises. And then we just doom that team for the rest of the season. I think that the, uh, the Packers were bounced back. Devontae Adams told our Cody Benjamin to basically what, what Aaron Rodgers told us a few years ago, relax. It's going to be fine. And, and I'm going to take him at his word. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is wise. I think sometimes we've seen this happen in the past on the rare occasions the Packers get blown out. By about the second quarter, when it's clear the outcome, Aaron Rodgers just sort of packs it in, and he doesn't really try. We got that sense last week as well. I think he'll come back. If anyone can play chip on his shoulder better than Aaron Rodgers, I don't know who it is. I think he's going to come back. He's going to have a big game, and then he'll be back to where we thought he would be, and the Packers will be back where we thought they would be in a division. I'm pretty sure that no one won a game last week in the NFC North. Ryan Wilson, part of our NFL Brain Trust here at CBS Sports HQ. His latest mock draft up for your reading pleasure over on CBSSports.com. Thanks, Ryan. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.